Hey guys, so today I am taking a look at a camera flash that was sent to me by Makey. And this is the model number MK9302. Now I have not ever used a camera flash on my A6000, but I did use a camera flash pretty extensively back when I was shooting Canon DSLRs. And one of my favorites was the Canon 430EX2. So this naming kind of reminds me of that camera flash. They also sent me this extension cord. So let's check out what comes in the boxes. All right, so here is the box that this comes in. And so you can see at the front, you have the logo, the Makey logo. This is a picture of the flash and then the model number MK9302. Around the back, another picture of the front, uh, and then a bunch of nice specs on the side. So let's get into this. So once you open it up, you have a user manual, kind of like a tripod or a stand for the flash. So if you wanted to set it up on a remote trigger and just put this on a flat table somewhere and the flash is in this nice pouch, which is kind of rain jacket material. Inside, let's see if we can pull this out. So it is bigger than expected. Speedlight MK932 for Sony, uh, made in China here. So you have electronic connections at the bottom for the hot shoe. And this rotates. Or I would assume that it would. Yeah. So it kind of clicks. So it will look like that if you are trying to shoot the flash directly in someone's face when taking a portrait. Or you could bounce it off of a ceiling or a wall, which I would recommend doing. Around the front you have the, um, the lens here and then a flip out um, diffuser. And I don't know, that car is is just there permanently. So I'm guessing that is for bouncing light, uh, but that is built in and not removable. So pretty interesting. I haven't seen that in a flash before. Uh, you can tuck those back in. All right, so you have uh, controls here. However, before I can show you that, I will need to put in four AA batteries. Now, along with this flash, Makey did send me this as well, which is an off-camera shoe cord, uh, which is pretty nice. So if you are planning on using the stand right here, you can connect that and still use your camera to control the flash using this cable here. This end would plug into your camera and then this end would plug in to the flash. So you could do something like this. Slide it in and lock it. And then take your A6000, slide this in and lock that as well. And then you have this contraption so you can move and position your flash wherever you need to. All right, so here's what the flash looks like mounted on my A6000 with the kit lens. You can point the flash down, which helps with the form factor a little bit but this is what it looks like. So you have the front, again you have the pop out and down diffuser. Around the front you have the sensor, again you have a slot here for some sort of connection that I still don't quite recognize. So when you mount this on the camera it is very very secure. There's no wobble whatsoever. And then you lock it into place with this lever and there's a nice click at the end. So it is not wiggling at all. It is very secure. I mean, you can hold the camera up using the flash. So they did a great job of making sure that this fits and, and works. Um, I have inserted some batteries in here. You have four AA batteries, um, and here is the back. So if we power this on, you can see that the screen does glow in a green color. 
Now this, this button is the test flash, or at least that's what I call it. It's probably not what it's called. And so when you press it, you can probably tell that the background is flashing. There is a mode button here that allows you to cycle from multi to S1 to S2 to M, which is manual. I just keep it in manual mode because this flash only works manually with the A6000. And what I mean by that is the A6000 doesn't account for the flash and doesn't adjust the picture according to the settings in the flash, which just means you should take a few practice shots with the flash. In fact, let me turn the camera on and show you what I mean. So if I'm in manual mode and you can tell I'm at one over 128, let's say I have no idea what I'm doing and I change this to one over four, which is really high. So I have my lens here at f3.5. Let me just switch to full auto mode, f4. So if I depress the shutter and take a picture, if I play that back, as you can see, the picture is completely or almost completely washed out. And so the flash works, as you can tell, and it is very powerful, but this setting just is too powerful. So if we adjust this back down to, I have been using it on the absolute lowest setting, which is one over 128. We do the exact same thing and we play it back. Now you can see that the image is a lot better and you just have a little bit of additional flash there. Now you can obviously bounce the flash up off of a ceiling. You can also rotate this a full 180 degrees and bounce it off of something behind you. You can use the diffuser, all of that fun stuff. Let's see, what are the other buttons here? Pilot button here. So it's a pilot. Uh, mode button I mentioned, zoom button, just to set how far you want the light to throw. 24 is the lowest setting. So we'll do that. And then just a set and then directional arrows on off switch. So very simple, very straightforward flash to use. Um, just playing around with it after a few hours, I found it that it was really easy to use. So here are some sample shots just to give you an idea of the differences that you get between using no flash, which is this first shot, now using the pop-up flash on the A6300. This next shot is using the Makey flash, bouncing it off of a ceiling. And this last shot is using the Makey flash pointed directly at the subject. So depending on what you want to do with your lighting, you can adjust this flash in multiple ways um, and bounce it, etc., etc. So it gives you that flexibility, which is very nice. I found that there were no issues, there were no misfires, the timing of the flash was excellent, everything just works, you click it, it flashes, it's all great. Um, it is very, very powerful. Here's just a shot that I took of a completely dark room. And as you can tell, it's just completely white. So I think that this flash would even work well outdoors if you need some additional fill lighting if you're shooting weddings, for example. So if you're asking yourself, do I need a flash for my A6000 or A6300? The answer to that is really it depends on what you shoot. If you shoot a lot of portraits indoors where there isn't very good lighting and you don't have a quick lens, then yes, a flash would be beneficial to you. I've always tried to use fast lenses indoors. So if I'm at f1.8 or f2, typically I don't use a flash because I don't need to. If I'm outside, I almost never use a flash because well, I don't need additional light outside. So it really depends on what you are doing. This is a cool tool to have around. There are a couple of things about this flash that I don't like. Number one is the size. It's very big, so if you are Trying to pack it with you on vacation is probably not the best thing in the world because, I mean, it's going to take up a lot of space in your bag. Number two is the way that it looks. Uh, I mean, it's not horrible, but I wish it was a little more sleek, more modern, more elegant. I don't know. They could have done something. I guess for $50, I'm just complaining, but I don't know. Number three, I wish that it wasn't a manual only flash so I wouldn't have to take a few pictures and make adjustments with the flash before I just went out and started shooting with it. 
Uh, obviously, if you have a flash that's compatible with your camera, that's fully automatic and that your camera senses and recognizes, it would cost a lot more money and um, who knows whether or not it would perform as well as this flash does. So that's just something to keep in mind with this flash. If your lighting conditions are changing, you will have to go out, take a few sample pictures, take a look at them, see if they're over or underexposed, and then make adjustments on the flash and then try again. So that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you guys have any questions about this flash or using flashes or flashes in general, please be sure to post that down below. If you guys have other recommendations for flashes or other flashes that you have used in the past, let me know. I'm always interested in reading what you guys think about them. Uh, check out the links that I'll post down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.